It's just Bruce, he don't bite. <laughs> Hello. Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, today I'm doing a food video, obviously. Um, chicken tetrazzini is something uh, I've had over the years that I really like. Um, it's easy to make, simple ingredients. Uh, I'm just gonna get right to the point and uh, get started. Uh, show you the ingredients and whatnot. Uh, we're gonna do this in my kitchen today, my little teeny tiny kitchen. This, this is not my kitchen. I just thought it'd be funny. But uh, yeah, chicken, chicken tetrazzini. Surprisingly enough, when I worked at the restaurant, people didn't know what chicken tetrazzini was. Well, you're gonna find out today. And uh, stay tuned to the end of the video because I'm gonna show you the mistakes I made and what I decided I could have done better. So, oh, let's get started. A, a friend of mine in real life, Sherry, got on my Facebook and said, you need to do some kind of a casserole because it's getting colder out. And it is kind of cold out today. So we're doing the chicken tetrazzini today. Uh, my way. Uh, you can also substitute uh, turkey. Uh, everything I'm using today is fresh ingredients. Um, you can use canned mushrooms or whatever, but I'll go through the ingredients and uh, we'll, well, hey, let's get started. You don't want to hear me run my mouth. I'll talk to you at the end of the video. And there we have most of our ingredients that we have to cut up and prep ahead of time. Uh, like I said in the video, I got uh, a pound of uh, white mushrooms cut up. You can use any kind of mushrooms you want. This is a uh, roasted chicken that I had left over from dinner from the other night. It's about, and I cut it up, I did that off camera. Uh, it's about three cups of just cut up chicken. It's cooked, of course. Um, one medium onion, and probably about four tablespoons of celery. Celery, no, no celery in this. Parsley. And I cut up four or five cloves of garlic because in my mind you can never have enough garlic the cold ingredients we're using today is going to be some milk i've got some heavy whipping cream left over from thanksgiving we're going to go ahead and use that you can use half and half uh you can use all milk uh whatever you just have to figure out the consistency for yourself uh some butter mozzarella cheese once again you can use any kind of cheese you want sometimes i'll mix some cheddar in with it too we're going to use a couple tablespoons of flour today too so make sure you have some flour ready I'm just using the all-purpose regular flour, nothing fancy. And of course some salt and pepper, which isn't pictured. Okay, now we're gonna get started. The first thing we're gonna do is cooked off a box of spaghetti here. I'm sure I don't have to teach you how to do that. But it's very important that you cool off the spaghetti when it's done. So what I do is I just put it in a strainer, run cold water over it so it cools down. Uh, I cook this to a nice al dente. If you wanna get technical about it, it's like almost cooked through. But some people like to cook it mushy the first time. And actually later in this video, I'm going to show you a mistake that you might make while making this dish. And hopefully it will prevent you from doing it because I've done it before myself. So we're just going to let that be. I'm going to preheat my oven to 375. And now we're going to start cooking our ingredients up. So now it's time to cook off our mushrooms. I'm using this uh, Dutch oven type thing today. It's a copper chef and I really like these pans. I don't get paid, I don't get sponsored by them or anything. But this is one I can put on the stove and put in the oven. That's what that's what I want to do today. I don't want to dirty a lot of dishes. So in my pan, I'm gonna put this on a medium heat. About medium, medium between medium and high. I use a gas stove. I mean I don't know what the electricity equivalent is, but I'm just gonna add a little olive oil in there. It's probably about three tablespoons maybe. You can use vegetable oil, you could even use butter, but butter burns easily. So for now we're just going to use the olive oil. I'm going to heat that up. It'll take about two minutes to heat that up. After my oil heats up, I'm going to take my mushrooms and I'm just going to put them right in there. We're going to saute those down for oh two or three minutes so they start turning a little bit brown. I don't want to cook them completely because we have other things we're going to add in there. So for now we'll just let them cook down. Stir them every once in a while. We just want to get a nice golden brown to them right now. I'm going to add a little sea salt just to speed up the process. I don't like, as a rule, adding a lot of salt to anything I make until the very end. Because it's so easy to 
uh, get it uh, too salty. If it's too salty, you can't remove the salt. But if it's not salty enough, you can always add. Been about three minutes, and my mushrooms, as you can see, they're starting to sweat nicely. They haven't started to brown just yet. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add in my onions. And we're going to stir those together. These veggies have different cooking times. That's why we didn't put them in all at once. You could put them in all at once, but the, the onions are going to turn brown and mushy. So I just prefer to wait a little while. So once again, we're just going to saute that around for a moment. I still have it on medium high heat. We're going to cook till these, till these uh, onions are translucent. See how long that takes. See, everything's starting to blend together now. My onions are starting to get a little soft. Still have a little more time to go, though. Okay, now that my onions are starting to get a little translucent, I'm noticing a lot of liquid. The liquid is coming out of my mushrooms, and I notice that's in the bottom of the pan. So I'm actually turning it up to high. I want to get some of that liquid away. So we turned it up to high. We're going to let that steam off for a few minutes. Now is the point we want to put our fresh garlic in there. Always put it in last because once garlic burns, it'll taint your whole dish. So what we're going to do is we'll put it in there. I still have it on high. Stir that around. Incorporate that garlic in there. I have a tendency to use a lot of garlic. But I'm going to cook this just until I can smell that garlic cooking. And now's the time I'm going to add some fresh cracked pepper. You can use regular black pepper like you use on your table. I just, I don't know, I just think the cracked pepper from the, the grinder is just a little more fancy. We're going to stir that around. There's that garlic aroma I was telling you about. As soon as you smell the garlic, you're going to throw in four tablespoons of your butter. I'm actually going to add six to this one because I think I might have misjudged my quantity, which I always do. Still on high, but I'm going to stir it because I don't want that garlic to burn. I just want my butter to melt. So far, so good. See, the butter's making a nice creamy sauce in there as it start with our base. We're going to show you how to thicken it up real good, too. Now, we're going to add some flour to this mixture here in a moment. Now, when you're using a butter and flour mixture to thicken anything, it's usually equal ratios. So, six tablespoons of butter is going to get six tablespoons of flour. That's about six tablespoons right there. I don't measure very much, if you've ever seen any of my other videos. But I'm sure this will work just fine. Now I'm going to stir and I want to cook that flour into my mixture. Never do anything with raw flour. You always have to cook it. And although we're only going to do this for a few moments, it matters. Now you see everything's all pasted together. Once we start add, adding liquid to this, that will dissipate. One thing I forgot to mention in the ingredients, I'm sorry for that, but I have it sitting here. You're going to need two cups of chicken broth for the next step. Now this will mix in better if it's cold. Especially if you're doing something that has lumps or 
a gravy that might get lumps. But what we're making today doesn't really matter. And we're going to stir that. Oh, this is starting to smell really good, too. I'm going to get this up now. At this point, it's okay to boil it because we haven't added our creams yet. So I might let this boil. It's going to take a few moments to get to temperature of what I want it to. We're going to show you that. It's already starting to thicken up nicely. At this point, it can become too thick. Don't panic because we're not done. There, we got a nice bubbling going on. That's about all you need from this. It's thickening up nicely. Now, what do you think we put in next? The creams, the milk, heavy cream, whatever you're going to use. Like I said, I've got some heavy whipping cream left over from Thanksgiving. I'm going to go ahead and use that. How much, you ask? I don't know. That's about a cup, I guess. And then I'm going to add about a cup of milk. Now, this is a little bit touchy. That's about a cup. Carefully measured, as you can see. This isn't touchy. This is easy, but... Now I'm just going to mix that cream in. I don't want it to boil now. No, sir. Do not want this to boil. But I want to get that all incorporated in there. I don't want this to be too thick at this point. Because you got to remember, this is the mistake I was telling you that people make on this a lot. When you make sauce for any pasta, and you put it on the pasta, and especially at a casserole like we're doing today, the noodles will suck up a lot of your sauce. So this particular recipe, if you make it too runny, that's okay. Because the noodles will take care of it. And especially the next day you go to get it. If you go to get a tuna casserole or even this, you know, or even leftover spaghetti you might have put in the refrigerator, it's all dry because it sucked up all the sauce. Well, we don't want this to suck up all the sauce. We want it to be nice and creamy when we cut into it. I'm lowering my heat now down to medium low. I don't need it to be real hot now. And I'm trying to judge for myself if I need to make this a little thinner. I'm going to guess that I do. So I'm going to add another cup of milk. Like I said, when I cook, there's really no exact measurements. I just go to taste. This is why I'm not a baker, because a baker would have to do this right down to the, to the grain of sugar which there's no sugar in this, but yeah, I think this is going to work just fine. Uh, what's next? Oh, now we can add our chicken and pasta. I'm just going to go ahead and put the chicken in so we can get that incorporated. And I'm starting to realize that I made the mistake. I make this mistake all the time. It's not a bad mistake. This is why people like to come to my house to eat. I'm making too much to cook in this uh, Dutch oven. It's just too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a, a casserole pan ready, a big one ready. I think I have a 13 by 9 laying around here somewhere. Because this, after I get the noodles in here, this is going to be ridiculous. So let me get that set up, then, I'll, then we'll get this ready. Oh, one more thing, one more thing. How could I forget the parsley? I went to all kind of trouble to make sure I had fresh parsley today so everything would be fresh. I'm just going to mix that in. It does not have to cook. It just sits in there. And it's actually, you can skip the parsley, or you can use the regular parsley you get, you know, in the spice rack. Um, this is more just for color to make it look pretty. Pretty parsley. So we are going to get a pan ready for this. But for right now, we're going to stop. Now, people have asked me before, when I use a pan like this, should I spray it with cooking spray? I say yes, so we're going to go ahead and spray it. Some people say no. My wife says no. But I don't want it sticking. So there, this is just regular canola oil spray. Now, ordinarily, I would mix this all in one Dutch oven all together and just throw it in the oven. But since I made way too much, this is how we're going to do it today. I'm just going to ladle some there on the bottom. It doesn't have to be a lot. I'm just going to spread it around like I'm making lasagna, maybe. This isn't lasagna. And then after that, I'm going to start putting my pasta in there. So, put the pasta. First of all, wash your hands. This way I know I got sauce underneath the pasta. I'm just going to put that all in there. Wow, I'm making a mess. Good thing I cleaned all this. 
I work very clean. So like I said, I got the sauce all on the bottom there. And my pasta. Now we are going to put cheese on this. Some people put the cheese in the sauce before they put it on. I do it a little bit differently. I actually meant to put some cheese on top of the sauce when I put it down there, but I forgot. I just want to put a little bit of this cheese so it gets in the middle of my casserole too. It doesn't have to be a lot. It can be as much as you want. You can dump the whole bag in there if you're that, into, that much into cheese. I love cheese. And sometimes on this I'll use cheddar cheese too. But I don't have that on hand. So now that that's there, I'm going to go ahead and put the rest of my sauce in there. Oh wow, it might even be too much for this pan. No, I think we'll be okay. I think we'll be okay. I'll put the rest of this on top and yeah, we're good. We're good. Now it's going to spread all this on top. This will all seep down in through my noodles. Like I said, I would have rather stirred it around in the pot, but I knew all that wouldn't have fit in that pot. So we do it the next best way. And another good way about doing it this way is I know that pasta is going to get that sauce. So that's, that's one thing I want. I know there's cheese under there. But I can also look and make sure that my chicken and ingredients are all spread out evenly. Every once in a while you get a whole bunch of chicken in one spot or you get a spot with no chicken at all and that just kind of annoys me. And now we just cover it with as much cheese as our little heart desires. Now if you really want a measurement on this cheese, I think I'm going to end up using the three cups total, maybe four. I really like my cheese on this though, so... That's a good thing about cooking, you can make everything your own. It's like painting a picture. Even if you're not very good at it, you can do it the way you want it. So I cover the whole thing with cheese. You never have enough cheese. And then just to make it look pretty, I'm just going to put some dried parsley on there. You don't have to do this either. This is just to make it look pretty so it looks appetizing. I was wondering if I should cover this with foil or not. Um, I decided not to. So we'll see how that works out. Uh, if I was making this at the restaurant, I would put a lot more liquid in there and I would cover it with foil. But that's only because it plans on sitting at a steam table or something like that on a buffet. But we're going to try it today without putting the uh, cover on top of it. And we're going to put this in the oven now. Okay, oven is preheated at 375. Let's cook it up. Okay, it's been close to about a half an hour. Time to check on it. I got a little helper here. I don't know if she's on the camera or not. Get back. You don't want to get burned. Move. Move. Oh, that looks about right. That looks beautiful. There, you can see it. Just enough to melt that cheese a little bit on top. It's bubbling from bottom. That means all my sauce got mixed in with the pasta. Ooh, I can't wait to have some of that. We're going to let it rest for about five minutes so it settles. That way it'll be easier to dig into. I am so ready to dig into this. And there's really only one way to dig into this. And that's just get a couple spoons. Or in this case, I'm just grabbing tongs. Look at the cheese. There's a cheese pull. Oh, that looks so good. I skipped lunch so I could have some of this. Oh, that looks so good, doesn't it? Let's taste it, see what we got. I've been looking forward to this all day, so I really hope it come out good. It's still very hot. Uh, here we go. Mm. Happy Fat Kid Dance. Oh, it's so good. The mushrooms are good. It has a good flavor to it. And you see, we didn't really use anything that difficult. One thing I wish I would have done, and I didn't think of it till just now, I, I wish I'd have put some Parmesan cheese in there. But you can always shake Parmesan cheese on top of it, which is what I think I'm going to do. Okay, let's go to the outro. 
Well, that's how you make yourself a good uh, chicken tetrazzini. Uh, I meant to tell you in the video you can use turkey instead of chicken if you want to. Um, someone was even telling me you can even use shrimp. That might be pretty good. Uh, a couple of things I did uh, in the video, and a couple of things I forgot in the video. Uh, first of all, Parmesan cheese. I might have mentioned it, but I forgot to put Parmesan cheese in it. I like to put Parmesan cheese in it, but you know what? It was perfectly fine without it. Um, the mushrooms. If you want to use canned mushrooms, go for it. Just don't cook them as long. Um, what else is in there? Do, 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 do. Oh, the cheeses. Um, you can put any kind of cheese you want in it. I prefer mozzarella. Uh, some people put all cheddar. Some people mix. Whatever you have laying around the house, it's, you can change it. That's the good part about it. You can change it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I don't do a lot of cooking videos. When I do, they're not really that popular. And people ask me, well, why do I bother doing it? I enjoy cooking, and I enjoy doing videos. I like teaching people how to do stuff. That's why I do those types of videos. So if you're watching it and you're still here, thank you. Hit that like button. Subscribe. You know, whatever. Uh, if there's something you want to learn how to cook, leave me a comment. Maybe I'll cook it for you and do a video like this, and then you can learn how to do it for me. Uh, my ways ain't perfect. I'm not no Chef Ramsay. I don't believe in any of that. I think cooking is personal to everybody, and I don't think anybody's right or wrong. Unless the food tastes like garbage, which mine did not taste like garbage. It was very good. I had like three plates of that, man. I had to lay down and take a nap when I was done. Which gave me time to think about what to do in this outro. Anyway, outro over. Thanks, and I'll catch you later. Bye. It's just Bruce. He don't bite. <laughs> Hello.